Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome back to the second part of this video series when it comes to rigging. In the last tutorial, we set up the joints, we got it to move the pelvis, we got it to move the legs, we got it to move the feet. Now we're gonna start working up the spine, the arms, the head, and so on and so forth. If you are new to this channel, I post tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and get started in rigging this gingerbread cookie. All right, so this is what we have so far. We have our pelvis that moves around. Woo. We have our leg that actually moves as well. Ooh. We also have our controller that moves the uh, the knee. And we also have feet. So if we need to rotate it or anything like that, we have control over the feet. We have also created a controller for the shoulders and we also need a controller for the rest of the spine. So I created this earlier and I might as well use it for that purpose. So let's go ahead and snap it. So V middle mouse and snap and get it inside that joint. Pink right there. Looks good. And this is a good opportunity to change it or alter it to whatever you want. So it's easy for the animator to grab. I'm going to duplicate this one, lift, bring it down and snap it to the bottom one. And if you want, you can kind of make it a little smaller or a little larger, depending on your desire. Then duplicate it again, control D, lift it all the way up. Now this one's a little bit more challenging because I really don't want it to be here. Um, I want the manip the manipulator, the center pivot, the pivot to be in the joint, but I don't want to, you know, make this huge. I mean, that looks, it's, I think it'll confuse the animator trying to animate this, that this is not the arms, that this is actually the spine. So let me go to control vertices and turn off joints so I don't accidentally select them and bring it down and scale it. So something like that. Oh, these guys are a little far off there. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to control vertices and just kind of scoot these over. If I want to make sure that they're actually on top of one another, you might want to take a look at it in top view. And I don't need all that space in the back. I just want it to be relatively even all around. But again, the important part is that the pivot is actually at the joint. So object mode, and there we go. So let's grab these guys. I am going to delete the history and freeze the transformations. I am not centering the pivot because again, I want the pivot to be in the joints. Oh, that one did not get to the joint. So let me make sure that gets in the joint. That's going to be important. All right. Doop, doop. That looks good. That looks better. And then I have the top joint. All right, so we're going to do constraints. So we're going to grab the parent, shift select the joint, which I turned off. So let's go back up here to turn that back on. And we're going to go to constraint, parent. Let's go to the options and make sure maintain offset is on and then add. So the idea is that this will now move as well as rotate. So let's do that again. Select a controller, select a joint, constraint parent. And again, constraint parent, click in the letter G to make it go a little faster. And finally the shoulder G. So now I can grab this, I can rotate it. I can move it around. Same thing for this, but you'll notice that they're not really following each other, right? And I also want the pelvis to, you know, the spine to go with it. So if I move this, pelvis, the spine should go along with it. So we're going to start parenting, not constraining, but actually parenting. Let's label this as a spine one and let's keep the control the same. So underscore control. Let's grab this one. I'm going to paste it in. I just copied it. So control C for copy, control V to paste. So it's a bunch of shortcuts. It's always really helpful. This is going to be control spine number three. So now I have one, two, and three, and this is the pelvis. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can grab the child first on the view panel. So select spine one, then select the pelvis, hit the letter P on your keyboard for parent. And you'll notice that pelvis has a little plus sign now and underneath that it's spine one. 
So we can continue doing that by selecting the child, then the parent, and then clicking P. Another way that you can do this is by middle mousing and dragging spine three. So here in the in the outliner, spine three, and drag it to spine two. So now that's a parent. So pelvis, spine one, spine two, spine three. And if you can guess the next one, it's going to be the shoulder. So that's a couple of ways. It's up to you which one's faster. I just like to show both ways, so whatever works best for you. And now you can rotate it and you'll see that it affects that one, which then affects this one, which then affects this one, which then affects this one. Perfect. All right, cool. All right, the head. We're going to do the same thing, but this time is a constraint. Select the parent, shift select the child, and we're going to constrain parent, All right? So now we can whoop. Whoop. Perfect. All right, let's do the hands. So in this case, I'm going to give it IK hands. Usually I go for FK. There's FK and IK. They have pros and cons to both. In the dinosaur tutorial, I made FK arms. This time I'm going to do IK arms. Now there is a way to switch it, and that's going to be a completely different tutorial for creating an FK IK switch. Um, if you remind me, I will uh, remember how to do that. But basically what we want to do is uh, the same thing as the legs. We want to make sure that the elbow is slightly rotated to the direction that we want it to bend. We're going to grab the shoulder and we're going to go to skeleton set preferred angle. Then we go back to the elbow and zero this out. Do the same thing. We're going to grab this one since I'm here, rotate it forward, grab this, the shoulder, and then say, skeleton set preferred angle and then go back and change this back to zero okay so now when we do our ik it's going to bend correctly so let's go to skeleton i can handle options and since i am going to have an elbow i want to make sure that i have a rotation plane solver so choose that one click on the shoulder click on the wrist and voila we have an ik handle Let's go ahead and do that to the other side. Click the shoulder, click that, there we go. And so now if we move the IK handle inward, you'll notice that the elbow actually bends backwards. Otherwise it could go somewhere, you know, unpredictably. All right, I have that. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna do uh, label these. This is my left arm IK handle. And then this is my right arm. I can handle. Get rid of the number. Perfect. I'm going to duplicate these guys. I'm going to reuse them. Control D. This is going to be my elbow. Whoop. So what I'd like to do is snap it to the elbow. So V middle mouse and snap and then push it backwards. Delete uh, center pivot, delete history, freeze the transformations. All right, let's duplicate it. And we are going to call this control D. This is going to be our right elbow controller. And I'm going to do the same thing, but this is a little trick. I'm going to V middle mouse and snap it to this elbow. And then I am going to change my translate Z to zero. And basically it's going to be the exact same position as the other one. And then go ahead and freeze the transformations, all that stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and tell the IK handle to point to that direction so that we can control it, right? You can see that it's pointing down this way. That's where, that's the pull vector. Grab the controller, then the IK handle, since we labeled it, it should be pretty easy. And then go to constraint pull vector, ta-da. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the other one. Select a controller, select the right arm IK handle, constraint pull vector, there we go. Now I can see that there's a little bit of a bend there. So let me make sure that my arm is straight. So let's go ahead and grab the IK handle and make sure that there's straight. Okay, cool. All right, let's um, make some controllers. Let's grab a circle, snap it all the way up to the top here. Boop. I wanna make sure it's in the, the joint. Go to control vertices. Again, it's probably going to select pull vectors and all sorts of stuff. So let's turn off the joints, let's turn off the handles, and then we can grab this and move this forward. And this is where you can actually go in and make some changes. So if you want to, you can, you know, pull this out and kind of make it look more like a hand if you want. Completely up to you. 
But at the end, the goal is to make sure that this is rotated correctly, which it isn't. And it might be better if I look at it in whoops, the front view. So that people can see it or animators can see it and they won't have any issues. So let me create my hand. Does it look like a hand? Does it look like a mitten? I was trying to go for a mitten. That's okay. Uh, oops. Okay, it looks good. Again, the pivot point has to be in, in the center, so double check to make sure that's in there. And then let me realign this a little bit. Make sure you grab all the controllers. All right, I'm gonna duplicate this, Control D. Change this to negative one on the X. Snap it to the other side. And then don't forget to delete the history, all that stuff. Again, don't center the pivot. The pivot has to be in that location, but it's important that it has no other information. So this is going to be our left hand control. And copy. Oops, paste with the R. There we go. Cool. All right. So we're going to tell the IK handle to basically follow the hand control. And we're going to use constraints. So we've got our left con left hand control. We're going to select our left arm IK handle constraint parent. And now the IK handle moves along. And we're going to do the same thing. Select the right hand control, select the right arm IK handle, constraint parent. Now you notice that it doesn't rotate, so we need to create a IK handle for the hands. So let's go ahead and do that, create IK handles. Yeah, so let's double click on this one. I actually just need a single chain, simple. So let's click on this one, click on twice. And this is going to be the right hand IK handle. And then same thing for this one. This is going to be the left hand IK handle. We're going to parent it. So let's grab the right IK handle or the left IK handle and drag it to the hand. So then it will rotate. Ta -da! And then we're going to grab the right hand IK handle, put it in the controller, middle mouse and drag. Doo -doo. And that's why we do what we do, All right? So now this controls not only the arm, but it also controls the hand. So it gives you complete control over your character. Okay, now we need one big controller. This is going to be the main control. So this is like the gingerbread controller. So we want one that's gonna control it all basically. So it's probably should be gingerbread all. Very important to delete the history, freeze the transformations, all that stuff. And we wanna make sure that when we grab this, everything goes with it, right? So let's go ahead and grab all of our objects and middle mouse and drag it into the gingerbread all. all right, so I'm gonna grab this and it's gonna take it with it. We also have to make sure the IK handles go with it. We wanna make sure the leg IK handles go with it. We also wanna make sure all of our foot controls and everything go with it. So basically this is the main control. This one's gonna make everything follow it. We have our pelvis. So then whoop, and there it goes. So basically when you're animating, this is the placement and then you animate with this controllers. All right. So let's make sure that when we twist this, the arms go with it. Select the hand, shift, select the shoulder, parent, select the hand, select the shoulder, parent. And so when the shoulders move, Oop, so do the hands and then you can animate the hands individually. 
Now, if you wanted to do a clavicle, basically the clavicle is the joint that will help you shrug the shoulders like so. So if you want that, you can go ahead and create one. So let's see what would be a good. All right, let's make a controller. So let's go to the top view. Let's go to create curve, EP curve tool. And again, we're going to go to linear and I'm going to make an arrow. So click once, hold down shift, go up to go down to I'm following just this guy's one, two, three, four, go up one. Go diagonal, go diagonal, and now I have an arrow. Um, I need to fix it, but in general, that's how I can do it. So now I can just kind of scale these flat, and that should, let me make sure these are aligned in the center. Actually, let me make sure all of them are aligned together. I'm just kind of scaling them in the same spot. I'm being a little precise here. There we go. We now have an arrow. Neat. Let's center that pivot and I'm going to snap it into the clavicle, make it small. There you go. And then duplicate this one and take it to the other clavicle. Go ahead and delete the history, all that stuff. This is again, let's label left clavicle control, right clavicle control. And just like what we did before, select the object or select the controller, select the clavicle. And what we want to do is do a constraint. This time we're going to use point because I only wanted to move in the translate. I don't need it to rotate. Our shoulders don't rotate. They just move up and down left to right. So let's go to point. Let's go to the options and make sure maintain offset is on. And then we'll do it again to the other one. Select the controller, shift, select that one, constraint point, And there we go. This should follow the shoulders, parent that. So now if the shoulders move, the clavicles goes with it. And if you need a little shrug, you can do the shrug. So it just gives you a little bit more control in your object. And there you go, everybody. We now have a completed character rig. Next is going to be to bind the joints to the skin and do a little bit of painted weights and all that stuff. We're also going to talk about blend shapes and facial rig. Everything should follow. Perfect. Um, and then after that, we're going to clean it up. We're going to clean up our outliner and then we are going to clean up the controllers. So then we are, then our little gingerbread man will be done and ready for animation. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you did, please like and subscribe. That is your message to me, letting me know that you like this type of content and that you want to see more. If you found this content useful and you feel somebody else might find it useful, please share. That would be amazing. Sometimes your game can be a little bit complicated, so hopefully these videos help make your characters come to life. Please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free videos, free ebooks, free downloads, and so much more. So academicphoenixplus.com. And there you can find my e-courses where you can support me even further. These are deep dives into Maya, including modeling, UV mapping, texturing, lighting, and rendering. So take a look at my e-courses. That would be incredible. Again, Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Next time, let's continue on with this character so that it is ready for animation. I will see you next time.